<laughs> good afternoon, good morning, good evening, YouTube. It is Joe. It is Saturday, uh, March 20th. It is Happy New Year. It's Astrological New Year. This is actually one of my favorite days of the year. Last night, my sister and I and some friends went to the Bay for our ninth annual uh, New Year's Eve celebration, which in um, astrology is a very big deal. It's the first day of spring, I guess is how a lot of conventional people would put it. For me, it's New Year. I don't celebrate conventional New Year's. I only celebrate astrological New Year's because this is it. This is the start of a fresh, fresh New Year. It's the beginning of Aries. And um, actually, it's only about noonish, and um, the, the sun doesn't actually even go into Aries until about 1 this afternoon. So we're in the dog days of Pisces right now. So it's great time for new beginnings, fresh starts. I'm packing to move right now. It's a little bit overwhelming, but I'm so excited um, because I really, really can't wait to move. I'm moving out into the sticks onto a farm with a soybean field in the backyard and a silo in the side yard and um, <clears throat> a clothesline and fresh air, and I just can't wait. I'm going to have a garden this year. It's going to be fantastic. Right now I live in the heart of Hamilton, Ontario. It's deep, deep, deep in the inner city. I've lived here for 10 years and six months in this apartment. Um, it's trying. There are um, homes for the mentally ill, schizophrenic halfway houses across the street next door to me and around the corner. This is a very, very urban neighborhood with a lot of problems. Um, I guess I should be grateful that it's not problems aren't worse. There's a lot of drug addiction in this city, but it tends to be uh, a little bit farther north than here. A lot of crackheads, a lot of mentally ill, and um, it's taken its toll on me. I've really tried hard for 10 years to, you know, enjoy this city and to try to, you know, but there, but for the grace of God, go I type of attitude. Um, but it's difficult, year in, year out. Um, the woman who lives downstairs is severely autistic. She's a very, very, very difficult person to deal with. She's very angry and um, rude and stubborn. and So, that's behind me. New Year, fresh start. Here we go. Um, Today's video, I was going to discuss maybe some religion. Maybe I'll just talk about New Year's because that's more on my mind these days. So, uh, as you know, I was raised Catholic and um, in and radical Catholic, dogmatic, fundy Catholic, fundamentalist Catholic. And actually, one of my earlier memories was in grade six in French class. I'm Canadian in Canada. You have to take French from grades I think five to nine, only four or five years of it. Legally, but then a lot of people choose to take it through high school and learn French. I never did. I only took it to grade nine. But in grade six French, she was teaching us adjectives. Um, and one of the best ways she could think to do it was, believe it or not, the astrological symbols, because each sign comes with a series of qualities that describe that sign, and those are adjectives. So I'm a Leo, for example. Leos would be proud or something like that. So she had this chart on the wall. Her name was Miss Pasqualetto. I remember that. And... Um, my mother had taught us from a very young age that anything astrological was occult, and occult was a sin, a big bad sin, and she had a lot of uh, pamphlets at home that the priest had given her. And I remember when I walked into French class being mortified. I mean, we went to Catholic school, and in Ontario, Catholic school is um, paid for by tax dollars. You don't have to, it's not a private school. Um, but anyway, she, there, I saw this board, and I remember being mortified, and I went home and I told my mother, and I was crying and screaming and saying, you know, the teacher's got sin on the wall and this and that. So I got all the pamphlets and I went into school the next day and I showed her and I explained to her she couldn't have it done. And I think my mother went in and spoke on my behalf and the very next day it was all down. And I look back on those days and I think, oh my God, oh my God. What can you do though? I was brainwashed pretty thick back then. Um, so then, when I was about 13 uh, or 12 and my sister would have been in about grade 8 or 9, she really got into astrology and she would do the charts by hand. Um, she would actually, she drew on a piece of paper a circle and another circle, and she drew a 360 degree um, chart, and she used to, we used to plot the planets and figure out the rising sign using all these tables and charts and math, and I mean, it would take sometimes an hour or more to figure out somebody's rising sign using these side real time charts, I remember, and she taught me how to do it, and I don't know why I grabbed onto it, but I did, Be even at that young age when I know, I still must have thought it was occult, but... And I must have given her a hard time about it. I must have. Knowing myself, I probably did. But as the years went on, I think by the time I was 17 or 18 and lost the religion, I got into it. And I remember I used to do charts for everybody back then, too. And astrology has always been a very big deal to me. In fact, if I were to describe it, I would say it's, it's pretty much my religion. Because I do believe that um, you are born with, the, with certain qualities. Each person is different. And sure, identical twins are 
you know, born on the same minute, like pretty much same five minutes of the same day. So they probably have a lot of the same qualities. But qualities can take, you know, different directions. You can have um, one more pronounced than the other. But the point is, I'm really rambling here. Um, being born, for example, a Leo with Sagittarius rising moon in Taurus tends to make me, uh, for example, pretty lazy or pretty um, slow moving. I, I'm like a queen laying around waiting for my, my minions to do their, my bidding. And then the Taurus moon makes me like a bull who's just not going anywhere. <laughs> so these are things I've had to fight in my life, for example. The Sagittarius rising gives me a really um, inquisitive spirit, a traveling spirit, fun. I love, I love to learn new things, sink my teeth into new things. I'm a perpetual student. Um, so there was all of that. I always thought that I was born this way, whatever way that might be. In one way, for instance, the Leo pride might be a good example. Because in the Catholic Church or in Christianity, pride is a sin. So here you have this child who's born naturally proud. I'm proud of my accomplishments. I'm proud of the person I became. When I got good marks in school, I was proud of that. And then going home and being taught that that's sin. You shouldn't feel that. It's all the glory of God. And I'd be like, but I did it. I'm, you know, I'm good. What's, what's wrong with being proud of my accomplishments? But no, we weren't allowed to be. So when I lost the religion and started to embrace astrology, I remember thinking the, the greatest way you can praise God, if you will, not that I'm saying that that's what I do, is to be the best person you can be. And I don't mean by a list of, um, you know, good behaviors as defined by the Catholic Church or Christianity. But if I read through Joe's astrological chart and all the things that I was born to do, I was born a Leo for a reason. I don't know why. But I'm a proud person, and I can be... I can use that to my advantage. I can do things. There's nothing wrong with being proud. And that's just one word. I'm only gra grabbing one out of thin air pride. But there's a lot of different um, qualities. Like, for instance, Virgos. I have a lot of Virgo friends. And Virgos tend to be perfectionists. And a lot of people think that's a very negative quality, but it's not. And if you can just be the best Virgo you can be, there's nothing wrong with that. It's kind of empowering to know that um, this is your path. And it's, it's, it's comfortable to follow that path. And I know my sister and I, we were discussing one time in Al-Anon. We both go to Al-Anon, which is um, for families of alcoholics. And um, they talk a lot about this higher power business. If you read Google the 12 steps, you can read the 12 steps. And one is to accept that a higher power can solve your problems for you. And because I don't believe in a conventional God, my God is astrology, so to speak. And that God, to turn over my, wi my you know, will or whatever to a higher power, well, the higher power is merely my astrological chart, which explains to me how I can be a better person and what's expected of me as a person because it's very unique to me. So uh, that's sort of my little take on astrology. So of course, um, in a, you know, throughout the course of the year, throughout the course of the month, the moon is in a different phase every month, uh, throughout the, the month. It takes 28 days to go through the 12 signs. So approximately once every two, two and a half days, it's, you know, right now the moon's in Taurus, for example. And I was born with the moon in Taurus. It tends to be a sleep-in kind of lazy day. Um, I tend to find it very relaxing, emotionally recharging. Um, my sister, for example, who was born with moon in Aquarius, she doesn't like it very much. She feels like stuck, like she can't get out of bed and kind of heavy and bullish. And I laugh because I like it. She doesn't. Moon in Aquarius tends to make me a little bit loopy. I tend to feel a little bit edgy. So those are our uh, moon cycles and how we all react differently. Um, today is a big day, first day of spring, first day of Aries. I'm so excited. New beginnings, fresh starts. Um, interestingly, just another little addendum to my uh, tale of woe from the car collision, which was one month and two days ago. Um, I've had a problem with my left hand. These two fingers have been killing me for uh, the whole month. 24-7, these fingers hurt. It hurts to make a fist. I can't even imagine playing the guitar. And... Um, the physiotherapist yesterday figured out what's wrong. Um, he pulled on my arm kind of like that, like, oh, and the pain subsided in my fingers. It turns out there's something called an ulnar nerve, which runs the whole length of your arm. It's your funny bone, right through your funny bone. That is the ulnar nerve, and up into your shoulder. And at the accident, I actually did get uh, an elbow injury. At the scene of the, the accident, I said that I had my elbow was killing me. And there's nerve damage either in my shoulder or in my elbow, but the ulnar nerve is damaged, and that's why my hand hurts all the time. So all the muscle relaxers in the world aren't going to help because it's not a muscle problem. And all the uh, painkillers are not working, and I was wondering why, and that's why, because it's not, um, nerve damage can't really be cured by conventional painkillers. Um, I think there's like anti-seizure meds or even antidepressants or something they said might work, but I'm going to hold off and see if physiotherapy works first. Okay, I'm approaching the 10-minute mark, so I'm going to wish you all a happy new year and a good day and a great weekend. Have a good one. Bye-bye.